Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel, Born With Backpack. And today I wanted to talk about uh, a recently announced device on CES uh, 2024 Consumer Electronic Show, uh, Rabbit R1. Uh, this is a held hand device uh, which is based on uh, large action models and it's uh, getting a lot of um, talks in, in the internet and uh, it's pro another promising uh, device that is uh, supposed to solve uh, some of your problems with uh, AI stuff. Uh, on the presentation, Jesse Liu, uh, founder of Rabbit, uh, talked about uh, all sorts of capabilities uh, of this device uh, and uh, how it's going to interact with your uh, applications and how you can ask uh, any questions and it will quickly will be able to uh, answer your questions. And the um, most interesting part for me was uh, when he talked about booking a trip for a family. As, as you might know, um, uh, I like to travel and uh, most of my travel are planned uh, by my wife. And uh, I know how much time it takes to find and carefully review all the uh, hotels, uh, Airbnbs or uh, other places to stay, uh, renting car services and uh, uh, understand where exactly it's going to be located, how far it's going to be from nearby groceries or uh, other ways to commute and all sorts of things where it's a very complicated thing to book a trip, especially for for a person. I, I don't quite remember exactly how much uh, folks uh, they have on the presentation for a book trip. But what surprised me is that he asked a question to book a trip, um, I think, to Europe. And uh, after a few seconds, uh, he scrolled on a small uh, screen, I think it's like less uh, uh, than half of the screen of the regular phone and uh, just said confirm. This was surprising for me, it's like wow you're trusting so much uh, to this device AI knowing that uh, there are all sorts of nuances so uh, when it comes to beginning a trip especially outside of your normal living area I would say because uh, if you're going to Europe, from the US especially, it's a different culture, different nuances, uh, some, I don't know, like unpredictable situation happens all the time. And, and it surprised me that just by glaring at this screen for a few seconds, he just scrolled it a few times and said, okay, confirm. And then later there was a conversation about uh, if it's uh, too intense for the trip. Uh, maybe he just need to uh, update some itineraries and uh, maybe sightseeing and uh, he was able also to do this and uh, then he also confirmed this. So for me it's like wow that's uh, really promising. Uh, the problem uh, that I see here is that first of all let's assume uh, we will be in the place where everything is up to date on the reservation sites whatever would it be. Um, car service uh, rental or uh, hotels or Airbnb or some private uh, house and they will provide you exactly all the information and the pictures and the AI will be able to analyze this and not mix, mix up everything and uh, also will be able to communicate to the host and confirm that those dates are actually going to be working dates and uh, you will be able to spend your pleasant vacation um, at the, this place. Let's assume uh, everything is working properly, there is no glitches between your bank account or uh, anything and uh, cars are available. It takes time and uh, most uh, important for me is uh, how does this model knows uh, what I prefer, what I like, how do you transfer all of this like it's supposed to be trained on your data and not some random data who prefer, I don't know, like uh, spending time in a pool but not going to the beach or uh, going to a hike or going early in the morning, going out um, in, I don't know, in the evening or night uh, lifestyle. All of this information has to be trained uh, and transferred to them. Uh, to, to this model and only then uh, you will be able to book your perfect trip where you just say confirm and uh, make a purchase. So that's uh, something 
um, that struck me as uh, like over promising, I would say, uh, technology that hasn't been proved working. When uh, ChatGPT was launched, there was a promise of um, uh, you will be able to book your trip just by using GPT technologies and uh, provide and like make a review based on the data. But turns out the data was uh, outdated uh, and it was based on September 28, uh, sorry, uh, September of 2021. And right now it's uh, beginning of 2024. A lot of things are changing, uh, laws are changing, uh, some rules. Like the problem with this is like you have to constantly train and feed the information to these uh, uh, models. So they would not only be like able to give you an answer based on information that exists, but also make a real time uh, availability of any information that has been published just yesterday uh, on some uh, website that is I don't know responsible for visas or something else I think it's like way more complicated than this uh, over promised thing um, the other example that he provided uh, during the presentation was like was the uh, stock price of coca-cola it's not something that I really need to have a large auction model to interact with, uh, I can do this uh, with my phone. And that's the other problem with uh, this device, I think, uh, that reminds me of um, some previous product that was uh, launched, I think, maybe five or even seven years ago. Uh, HTC, uh, phone manufacturer, had an Android device uh, that uh, was regular Android phone, but also they were providing just a stick uh, for phone calls where they wanted to optimize um, uh, battery life on the phone and uh, instead of like making better performance uh, of the device they said like for phone calls just use another phone and you probably won't even find too much articles right now i tried to search this uh, on the internet uh, before this video but turns out uh, it's not that easy to find like which exactly HTC phone was providing this option but it was true uh, people uh, wanted to solve like seems to be obvious problem of prolonging battery life but giving you another device and this is something that not really stick to a lot of people where it comes to having extra device where you already have uh, one like your primary day-to-day -day use phone. And this is, I think, bigger problem of uh, everyone else on the market who is trying to compete for user attention, user uh, <coughs> usability of uh, their gadgets. And uh, let, let's consider a part for charging. Uh, you might remember the time where you, you could not use wireless charging and you have to plug in your phone to your cable and uh, uh, it was problematic because uh, there were all sorts of cables and recently uh, I even f f found this in, in the movie where they open the drawer and there's like tons of cables like for a anything they wanted to charge uh, some uh, old uh, phone device and we are getting to this phase where uh, USB-C uh, type will be in the, the main charging for majority of devices, uh, just because the iPhone switched to uh, USB-C from a proprietary uh, lightning port. And I remember those days where there was like all sorts of cables uh, to charge those things. But my point is about now you have watches, you have a phone and there are already some sort of um, like, let, let me show you this. Uh, these uh, devices where like here's your phone here's your uh, airpods and here's your watch and what you're going to do you're going to put uh, another uh, addition to charge s something extra and additional um, ex extra device so that's an another kind of minor problem where like why would you carry two devices uh, and take an extra pocket yeah like when i was thinking about this okay we have a smartwatch uh, we have uh, airports, uh, all of th those things need to be charged and it's kind of not the nightmare yet, but some problem or a headache for day-to-day -day consumers which uh, will eventually kind of stop people from using 
something like they will abandon they will forget or like oh i didn't charge my second uh, phone or device and it's no longer working like i, I do understand this as a, a minimal use case for example where you probably would not interact with your phone that much where they are talking about uh, you just use uh, rabbit r1 and uh, it's small compact uh, lightweight and uh, you're always interacting with this but before that uh, situation will become reality a lot of things has to happen like every everyone has to adapt to this notion where all the apps are up to date with their apis and they allow you to interact with them uh, by api protocols or uh, i don't know like some other way so the rabbit rq will uh, sorry rabbit r1 will have um, all uh, information and access to the data that you have on a phone as an Android developer, I can see that this is a nightmare for everyone. It's like it takes time to update all those things um, and make it uh, even up to date with uh, most recent uh, SDKs and um, requirements from Google Play, from Apple Store, and uh, it, it's going to be hard. Not only because there are software is constantly changing, but also hardware is constantly changing. Let's assume this uh, R1. Uh, is going to be success and out uh, of those 10,000 sold units for $200 plus taxes uh, you gonna have a good experience for first year what about second version is it going to be costing more there's probably going to be more than uh, just one iteration if they're planning to expand on this why it has to be different like are they going to uh, support just a firmware update or s software update for the internal apps of this device. I'm pretty sure there are apps that are responsible for image display loading or music playback. Music protocols are also changing um, quite fre frequently, I would say. And uh, that's the part where, like, it would be good maybe 10 years ago where things were just in the development and uh, there wasn't that much of uh, life cycle of like standalone devices but we actually were in the opposite state uh, back then like every year new iphone was promising new things like new android devices were promising a lot of things and i remember i remember those days where uh, um, people were super hyped about uh, all the new uh, iphone capabilities where there's going to be a laser keyboard where you can put your phone on on a desk and just type, type in uh, this there's going to be holograms there's going to be an no lightning but out of all of those things we can see that uh, foldable devices uh, turns out to be a promising thing and there was also a lot of nuances uh, until samsung and other manufacturers uh, kind of expanded on this um, territory of foldable devices and now we're just waiting for apple to catch up and release uh, their foldable devices maybe uh, in a few years uh, but that's another thing where like a lot of things has come together to force you to use something that hasn't been used and um, like another use case for um, like not carrying another device that basically i would say like diminishes the purpose of a device where you can download kind of similar apps and uh, use them on your phone considering that modern chipsets on phones are capable of um, working with uh, large language models and uh, maybe they will be able to work with uh, large action models and interact with all the other apps and information on the internet so long story short i think there are just too much of promise of this device and uh, uh, when I was looking on the Twitter for this uh, device, uh, the second post uh, after announcement was like when this company will shut down and uh, there were two uh, options to answer, uh, 2024 or 2025 and 70% of people said uh, it's going to shut down in 2024. Uh, so that doesn't mean there is no uh, space for those innovations. I think it's just like over promising things that makes it unreliable and uh, when 
CEO of the company is presenting something that is not really true, not really actionable, like regular person uh, won't be able to uh, book the trip just by saying like book me something that is already not working based on uh, existing ChatGPT functionalities that were promised uh, a year ago uh, where people will be able to just communicate verbally and uh, you won't need anything else world hasn't adapted to those technologies um, and the other factor uh, i need to say is about uh, cost of these uh, language models all of this processing is taking power and um, if we consider that uh, this device is capable of uh, using uh, its own power and it doesn't need uh, like extensive training on tpus or other uh, infrastructure of cloud services that's good but how much capable uh, will it be by analyzing uh, the data? Uh, I, I don't really quite remember the details of uh, image uh, processing and repeating tasks from Journey, but this is something uh, different uh, to talk about. Maybe this will be used by uh, uh, designers and uh, camera interactions and uh, live um, environment or augmented reality uh, will be taking place more. But specific user-human interaction really hard to solve, uh, especially on like world-scale problem, and um, that's what I wanted to talk mostly uh, about today. Uh, if you made this far, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, feel free to leave me a review in the comment. Uh, also, like and subscribe for grow on my channel. Thank you. Bye bye.